Grivier de Siem, welcome to this video. We're going to be talking all about the tracks and this area underneath here. We're going to do the painting and a little bit. We're going to start weathering on this section here, the underhull area. Okay, just explain a few things very quickly, okay? Because the model's in many, many different components. Uh, I hate it. I absolutely hate it when it's like this. I, I like to paint things as one, but I haven't got a choice here. And the main issue is getting these um, side skirts and the error blocks on mounted properly. So what I'm going to do in this video only is talk about the painting of the tracks. I'll do weathering on these. First of all, the tracks, yeah, these are these... Um, they're made of styrene, okay, just like that styrene there, but it is under higher pressure. And if anybody's worked with Bandai, you know the problems that can happen with that, with enamel thinners, etc. So that's going to affect our weathering. So the first thing I want to do is get a good coat of uh, primer down on that. I'm going to use mahogany surface primer. It, it's going to do two jobs in one stone. First of all, it's going to lie down, obviously, that primer coat that we need on there. Also, that base color is a pretty good representation of the bare steel components of the track. The other thing that I need to do, I'm going to paint overall, I'm going to give the overall hull, turret, etc., Primer 1000, just because they've got different components here of, um, you know, metal, different plastics, etc. So I want to get a smooth, consistent base coat, but mainly I'm going with grey because the thing's already sand coloured. So if I want to see what's going on when I lay down my um, camouflage um, cork uh, colour of those um, Iraq tanks, um, I want to see it on top of the grey. Nice neutral base. So we'll do all over all that. We'll go onto the uh, road wheels, sprockets. Anyway, so let's kick off, get the primer down, and then I'll explain the next bits and pieces.
Okay, just a quick recap on what you just saw, just explain a few things. Pre-shading on the whole, use gray and mahogany brown, a little bit of black. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but all I've done is outline the shapes, basically. And I just wanted to lay down that primer. Also inside here, we've got some base color. I'll talk about the base colors when we actually go onto the camouflage painting, but I just needed to block in this area here. Also, just around here as well, so I don't get overspray, because we're going to weather this um, in the next step. It's only a very small section, but it does need weathering, so we will go into that. Uh, let's talk about what we're going to do next, which is um, the tracks. I basically, I've done all the, uh, the base work, really. Um, very small ch uh, chipping effects, uh, the airbrushing. The tracks now are just in this mahogany brown base. And what we want to do is add a rust patina. And the rust patina, obviously, is only on the metallic parts, which would be um, these end connectors the guide horns, etc. But the method of application is going to mean that the whole area is going to get covered in these two rust tones. Because we've already got a dark rust tone, rust tone. Just going to use a medium and a light. Light quite sparingly as it's quite a yellow, very strong uh, rust colour. Um, also, we'll, when we do the application, we're going to use some water with detergent to make it flow quicker. And the reason I'm using uh, acrylic colors is because, as I explained, there is a tendency for these types of links to fall apart when they're exposed to enamel type products, so avoid that. And then, of course, what, after everything's rusty, we need to go back and then I need to hand paint in all of the rubber pad sections. So we'll, we'll do that and I'll show that to you. We'll be using like a very dark gray color for that. Um, with the road wheels as well, we'll actually start add some washes onto the rubber parts, add some contrast into there. So we'll cover the, the next bit, it's going to be basically, we're going to add some weathering into here. Let's get these tracks done first. Uh, we'll use some washes as well, we're going to use some dry dust and road dust washes as well, that are acrylic again, so we can blend all this together. And to quicken things up, we will use a hairdryer. A hairdryer comes in really handy with these acrylic type washes because uh, it tends to be a bit of a messy sort of job, but it's quick and um, that's what we need to do. We need to speed things up. So let's crack on.
Okay, let's go and have a wrap up now. We've basically got as far as we can on these tracks. Explain bits and pieces. Let's explain about the weathering, the weathering philosophy, especially, um, I posted up some pictures and had some comments about them. Not on my Patreon, but elsewhere. It was kind of interesting um, to read some comments. I better just explain something. The, the, I'm gonna put up some weathering images now, or some reference images rather, and just explain a bit about them. Obviously, um, to a modeler, we're looking for the most interesting images, really. So we're looking for, you know, areas that we can depict this weathering, we can show this story. We know that the, um, this tusk is in operations in Iraq. It's got heavy wear to it in some cases. Um, but the images that I use for the weathering, let's just take, let's have a look at the sprocket. The sprocket, first of all. The sprocket image that I use is that one where we've got the heavily um, chipped... Uh, tooth and I wanted to depict that which which I did um, I've seen quite a few modelers they use very bright silver pretending that the actual tooth sprockets um, become bare sort of like polished steel well that never happens basically even I've added a little bit of metallic effects and even that's over the top in reality they, they look pretty corroded in fact this is the only area that I've added on any sort of element of corrosion. I had a little bit of rust wash, wash that I didn't show um, in the montage. And this is the only sort of component that I saw actual sort of rust on. Um, so that was one of them. And I think it's interesting because if we look under this area here, it's, it's a detail point. It looks interesting under there, certainly. The other area as well was the tracks as well. The tracks, um, I had comments that um, tracks do not get rusty and in fact they appear polished in sandy conditions. Well, 
bring up some images again and you can very clearly see that in terms of the end connectors and the actual guide horn areas they do become corroded yeah and of course on, on ours we've got rubber pads that are degraded um, and they get chewed up in fact the only polished area is the actual inner portions of the guide horns they actually become like bright chrome type steel now the other area now this is kind of interesting because um let's bring up this image first of all now this is like you know the highest level where you're going to see and um what you can see you can see some dark spots around the road wheels and i was kind of careful with with the road wheels as well because i wanted to show some wear there as if a stone may have got in and done some damage but the fact is these are aluminium road wheels so we haven't got like rusty corrosion there but there is some dark spots and that's what i wanted to show so we're not too sure maybe using the brown color for the chipping was wrong maybe she was green because it's possible that the um outer cork tan color got chipped off down to a primer or an underlying green coat or something like that but the intention was not to show rust and somebody was arguing with me the wheels don't get rusty the wheels don't get well i'm not showing them as rusty i'm showing them as you know chipped some wear and tear to them that's all so i haven't used rust washers on those road wheels quite deliberately so it's kind of uh, interesting that people sort of jump to conclusions but i'm kind of like the opposite of totally coating this thing in rust that is not the depiction that i'm seeing in my reference images but there is paint wear that does happen and then the final point as well was with the bolts as well the bolts apparently um do not rust as well uh well i can't, I can't say because they're zinc um plated well i can see in this image clearly that whatever's happened i'm not saying it's rust but the paint has chipped off of the bolts and I wanted to show that in particular in that, in that uh, drive sprocket there as if, well, it's very possible that when they need to torque the bolts that they've removed paint off of them. And what we're seeing actually, we're not seeing rust because I haven't used rust washes, but we're using, seeing an underlying darker tone that might be primer and it might be, um, it might be uh, an underlying green base coat. Not too sure it appears dark. Uh, what else can we talk about also like in terms of weathering these are just base steps really so even though um i've got like a very light dust wash on the tracks but i'm going to do overall dusting later on the idea here is to get everything together as well at this stage so it's quite nice the only thing that i need to do is um tighten up this track here it's loose at the moment I need to super glue it into position but um overall it looks okay uh, it's quite important to get the track taut. The tracks do not go loose at all, basically, on uh, modern main battle, battle tanks. They're tensioned correctly, yeah? So we need to get that looking right. But overall, looks okay. I'm a bit surprised, actually. One thing that... Okay, the fit over the sprocket isn't the best. I need to admit that. It's not exactly the best fit over the sprocket. The actual uh, end connectors should be tight into that um drive sprocket but overall that's how it's looking kind of nice to get to this stage at the moment i think the only thing I, I need to mention as well is just this area inside here as well the only thing that we need to do is add in some dust and added in some wash but dusted again over that the idea is to get that depiction of like baked on dirt into that area and that basically rounds it off as you can see um a bit more detailed this video but not too long the next video is going to cover paint so i'm going to explain again all the concepts about that hope you enjoyed the video and um, see you on the next one